brought to you by Skillshare. Today in Apple Motion, I'm gonna show you the secrets to creating a looping background for Final Cut Pro. Also, if you're a patron, you can download a whole bunch of these backdrops right now, or if you want, you can just pick them up on my store if you don't wanna subscribe via Patreon. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, I'm gonna suggest that you select either the Final Cut Generator or the Final Cut Title. I personally prefer using generators for backgrounds, but it really does not matter. In the top right, you can leave your preset at whatever you typically like to edit with and your frame rate at whatever you typically like to edit with. From there, I highly recommend that you set your duration to 10 seconds. This is just gonna make it much easier mathematically down the road to make a looping video. From there, we can go to the bottom right and click open. The first thing we wanna add in motion is our gradient. So go over to your generators and locate the gradient generator click and drag that over into your layers panel. With that gradient selected, go to the inspector and find the gradient settings. If you click on this down arrow, it will expand it and give you all the controls you could possibly need. Now you could of course click on here to add in your own colors and get a gradient going the way you want it to, but I find it's much easier to use the preset gradient. So we'll click on this icon and change it over to something like Dawn Purple. After that, I wanna expand out this gradient to make it look much better so we can find this down arrow next to our arrow tool and locate the adjust item. You'll see that that gives me these on-screen controls for our gradient so I can just click and drag these out to expand them to make our backdrop look way better. With our gradient in place, now I wanna add some nice texture to it. Selecting that gradient, we can go up to our filters, go down to stylize and select add noise. Now at first, this is gonna look really bad. First, change the amount down to 0.1. Then change the type from white noise over to something like Gaussian noise. After that, go ahead and check this box for monochrome, which will take out any of the colors that it was applying to it. And finally, disable auto animate. This is going to get rid of any of those animations so it doesn't look like static on our video. From there, we can go ahead and drag down the mix value so that it's not quite so intense on our video. But now you can see we have this nice textured background for our videos. Now that we have noise on our gradient, I'm gonna rename the group that contains this gradient to be the gradient group, and we can go ahead and collapse that. After that, I'm gonna right click and add a new group, which we can call overlays. With the overlays group selected, we can go on over into our library. Under our generators, we'll look up the concentric shapes. Go ahead and click and drag that into your overlays group. At first, you're gonna see how this just completely overwrites the gradient that we just added onto the timeline. But do not fear, all we need to do is select the group that contains the concentric shape, then go over to your inspector, properties, and locate your blend mode. We're gonna change the blend mode from pass through over to overlay. And the reason I wanna apply this onto the group is so that anything that we apply within this group is going to receive that blend mode. That way we don't have to individually select that for each shape that is added into this group. Selecting the concentric shapes generator, we can go to our generator settings and find all of these different values that we can adjust. I'm gonna go down to the width value and change it to something like 400. It's gonna be important that you keep track of whatever this value is, and I highly recommend you make it divisible by 10. I'm also gonna go ahead and drag up my contrast so that we have a nice sharp circle with these concentric shapes. Finally, we're gonna find this phase value. You'll notice that as I drag this up, the circles continue to grow in our video. With this phase value, go ahead and click on this down arrow, then select add parameter behavior and select rate. The rate value will continually add a value onto a given parameter, so we can set this to animate for infinity. Right now, the rate is set to zero. Go ahead and set this to 40. The reason I am setting this to 40 is before we set this to 400. And so we want our rate value over 10 seconds to equal the same value that we have set here under the width. So 40 times 10 is going to equal 400, which is going to be the perfect width of one of these circles. So if we go to the very end of our animation, you'll notice how it loops perfectly. 
Now that we have that set, these concentric circles are definitely a little too bright for my liking. So selecting the concentric circles, we'll go to the properties and drop the opacity quite a bit. So now it's just a very faint circular outline. I now wanna add some nice layers on the outside that will just slowly animate back and forth, giving us a sense of motion on our projects. With the overlay selected, we'll go ahead and select the rectangle tool. Go ahead and create this to be whatever size you like and disable the outline on that rectangle. Then we'll go to the geometry settings and locate the roundness slider. Go ahead and drag that roundness slider up until you are happy. With that rectangle selected, we'll go to the properties and find the position value. Go ahead and just click on this down arrow and select reset parameters so it's directly in the center. Now that we've done that, we can go into the position parameters and click on this down arrow next to that and locate the X value. Go ahead and right click on that X value and select add parameter behavior and select oscillate. The oscillate parameter behavior is one of my absolute favorites when it comes to creating a looping backdrop for motion. With the default settings, we're gonna run into an issue where this is not going to perfectly loop you'll see that at the end it just jumps back to its original position. That's because the speed is set to 10. We need the speed of this to be divisible by six. So if I set this over to six, you'll notice that at the end it perfectly loops. And in fact, if I push command eight, we can see that the wave of this animation lines up perfectly. So if we set this to numbers divisible by six, this animation is always going to perfectly loop. So for example, if I set this to 60, the animation is going to take place 10 times over this 10 second animation. Or we can set it all the way down to something like 18 to have it play out three times times. So just play around with those values and find the right animation speed for you. Now that we have this first rectangle in place, I'm going to push command D to duplicate it. Then we can go on over to our property settings and locate the Y value. I'm going to set this to Y value 400. Then I'm going to push command D one more time, go to my property settings and set it to negative 400. So now we should have three evenly spaced animated rectangles. However, they are all moving at the same wavelength and we want them to be offset. Jumping inside of the oscillate parameter, we can find this phase value. Go ahead and set that to something like 10 or 20. It really doesn't matter. And then do the same for the last one. So now they should all be on different phases. You could even adjust stuff like the amplitude so one is moving further than the other. So we could set this to 200. So now the wave animations will be much further. So this will give you a nice varied animation that you can play around with. But now that we have all of these rectangles animated, I'm going to select all three holding shift, right click, and then select group. Now we can go ahead and rotate these pill shaped rectangles and drag them to the lower left hand corner. And if we push play, we now have this beautiful little animation playing out. I'll go ahead and rename that to be pills and collapse that group. Finally, let's go ahead and add some nice rectangles to the top right hand corner. First, I'll select the rectangle tool and select the overlays group and then just create a basic rectangle. After that, we can disable the outline. With this rectangle selected, I'm gonna go ahead and push command D to duplicate it, find the properties and adjust the Y so that they're evenly spaced. Now with those two rectangles selected, I'll right click and select group. Then we can rotate them to our liking and place them in the top right hand corner. From there, selecting that group, we can go to the properties and locate the position parameter. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse it, then click on this down arrow next to the position, add a parameter behavior, and then select oscillate. Finally, we can set this to six so that it's perfectly lined up for a looping animation. By selecting both of those position parameters, you'll notice that it's working on both the X and the Y value, giving us this nice angle of direction. And that is just gonna slowly move back and forth at whatever rate we adjusted in the oscillation parameter behavior. So this is looking pretty good, but I feel like I wanna have a nice little squiggly line show up here in the bottom right and top left hand corner. Let's go ahead and select our paintbrush tool. Selecting the overlays group, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out just a little bit so I can see where I'm painting. Now I'm just gonna click and draw to create a nice little squiggly line in this corner. I'll go ahead and drag up. We could even have it loop in on itself and then go further off to the right hand corner. It does not need to look very good. You can see how poor I've drawn this circle. We will fix that by jumping into the geometry settings of that paint stroke and find this roundness value. I'll go ahead and just click and drag until that roundness has been fixed so we have a nice clean squiggly line here. Going into our style settings, we can change the brush color from red over to white or to whatever color you like. 
Now you'll notice that because I use this paintbrush, it actually already added this parameter called the write on parameter. That means it's going to automatically animate drawing on, which is really nice. However, it has done it at the speed that I recorded the animation. So it's gonna look a little bit jittery, especially because I'm not very smooth with my mouse. So to change that, we'll select the write on parameter and locate the speed. Right now it's set to recorded. Let's go ahead and set it over to something like natural or you could do easing. Also, I wanted to write on and then write off. So let's go ahead and change the shape outline from draw over to draw and erase. So now the animation is going to play out where it draws into position and then it draws out. We could even shorten the length of this write on parameter so that it's much faster. And finally, with that paint stroke selected, I'm gonna push Command D to duplicate it. Then we can move it up and I'm also going to offset it here in my timeline. So now we have the animation play out in the lower right hand corner and we should have it play out in the top left. I'll go ahead and just click and drag to adjust its position until it's at a position that I like and then let that animation play out. So we now have these nice little squiggly lines that appear in our animation. And what's great is everything is perfectly looping throughout this entire animation. So now that we have all of these animations set up, let's go ahead and get this published over to Final Cut Pro. The first thing you wanna do is move to the end of your animation and push Shift M. This is going to give you this green marker. You can right click on that marker and then select Edit Marker. From there, we'll need to change the type from Standard over to Project Loop End then we can push OK. That's going to tell Final Cut Pro that at the end of 10 seconds, it needs to loop all of these animations. After that, we can select our gradient group and expand that out and locate our gradient layer. From there, we can locate this gradient setting. If you wanna make it so you can change the colors of this gradient in Final Cut Pro, you'll need to right click on this gradient setting and select Publish. This is going to give you all the parameters here that you need from your gradient options inside of Motion. Now that we have everything set up the way we want it, we're gonna push Command S to save it. In here, we can change the template name. I'll just call it Radial Background 1 and throw it into whatever category you like. You might even want to make an additional category. I'll throw it into my minimalist backgrounds. From there, we can push Publish. Now we can jump inside of Final Cut Pro. Inside of Final Cut Pro, we just go up to our generators, then locate minimalist backgrounds and locate our radial backdrop. I can drop this on the timeline. We'll see that we have these beautiful animations playing out and we could even extend out the duration as long as we need. So that is how you can create a looping background for Final Cut Pro by using Apple Motion. If you're a patron, don't forget you can download this backdrop as well as many others to use in your videos, or you can pick them up on my store by following the links down below. Now, if you wanna to continue to level up your Apple Motion skills, I strongly recommend that you check out Skillshare. Skillshare is an incredible platform that allows you to gain access to thousands of courses on pretty much anything you could possibly think of. Whether that's video editing, running a business, or even building your charisma, Skillshare has you covered. I personally have been loving using Skillshare to level up my Apple Motion skills. I've been following James Rickard's course called Going Farther with Apple Motion, and it has showed me a whole bunch of hidden features that I wasn't first aware of, as well as continuing to sharpen the skills that I already had. If you are one of the first 1,000 people to sign up using my links down below, you are going to get access to Skillshare's entire library completely for free for your first month. Don't miss this incredible opportunity to level up your skills as a creator for free and sign up today.